I don't want to make a big issue out of it. We begin with a Halloween horror that still haunts the Houston area 40 years later. He is being called the Candy Man, a Pasadena father of two who passed out poison candy to trick-or-treaters Halloween night, 1974. Only victim killed in that crime was his, his eight-year-old son. It's that time of year once again. The autumn leaves have begun to transform into the warm and bright colors that bring comfort and beauty to the cool and crisp fall air. Embers flicker in the night skies while ghosts, goblins, witches, werewolves, and spooks and specters of every kind blanket neighborhoods from town to town. Halloween is upon us, and as the years and decades have gone on, this holiday has seen the rise of various urban legends surrounding the most haunting time of the year. Legends that have filled children with goosebumps and left parents far more hesitant about letting their kids wander off into the cold night of All Hallows' Eve. For decades now, one of the most popular and talked about urban legends of Halloween is what has become known as the razor blade and the apple. This legend is based around the belief that various treats given out during the evening of trick or treat have been embedded with some sort of a hidden sharp object such as a razor blade with the intent to cause significant harm to whomever is unfortunate enough to bite into it. Fortunately, while this legend managed to take on a life of its own, there have been virtually no reported cases of blades or any kind of sharp objects actually being found in candy or treats of any kind. The unfortunate part of this legend, however, lies in its origin. Back in the 60s and 70s, there was a period of time where hoaxes and pranks began to spread like wildfire every Halloween. There would be reports of someone giving out poisoned candy or various treats being laced with some deadly or harmful substance, but almost every instance of this would ultimately be debunked, except for one Halloween in particular. On a cold and rainy Halloween night in 1974, Ronald O'Brien of Houston, Texas would hand out pixie sticks to five children. One of those children, eight-year-old Timothy, would complain that the normally sugary candy tasted bitter and would soon become violently ill. About an hour later, Timothy O'Brien, the eight-year-old son of Ronald, was dead. None of the other children would end up consuming their candy. But one child in particular had tried to open his pixie stick, but had been unable to remove the staples keeping it sealed. His terrified parents would find him asleep, the unopened pixie stick still sitting in his hand. Upon investigation of Timothy's death, it was discovered that the pixie sticks had been filled with cyanide. According to police, the sticks had contained enough cyanide in them to kill several grown adults. Ronald would appear shocked and distraught after his son's death until it was discovered by investigators that Ronald had in fact recently taken out life insurance policies on his two children. The investigation determined that Ronald O'Brien had poisoned and murdered his son Timothy in an effort to collect the insurance money and pull himself out of well over $100,000 of debt. It was also discovered that the morning after his son's death, Ronald had called his insurance company to ask about how and when he could receive his son's insurance money. In June of 1975, Ronald would ultimately be convicted of his son's murder. And on March 31st, 
1984, ten years later, Ronald O'Brien was put to death by lethal injection. In the weeks, months, and even years that followed, Ronald would become known as the Candyman, and some would even refer to him as the man who killed Halloween. All across the U.S., parents would be terrified to let their children go out on Halloween night, not knowing whether the candy treats being handed to their children were deadly traps made by monsters of the realest form. Almost every year, stories and rumors would spread through various neighborhoods that someone was handing out poisoned candy, including fruits and candy bars potentially being loaded with razor blades. Like I mentioned at the start of this video, there would be almost no reported cases of such things taking place, but the fear instilled by the murder of Timothy O'Brien in 1974 seemed to truly leave a lasting stain on the Halloween season for so many people. Many towns would even go as far as to call for Halloween to be canceled or banned out of fear of poisoned candy being handed out to unsuspecting children. It changed the landscape of how people view this holiday, and for those of us who would grow up in the decades that followed this tragedy, it's very easy to remember all of the years where our parents would seem extra nervous before letting us go out collecting our candy from door to door. The fear of not knowing whose door you're knocking on and not knowing if what you were getting was a simple harmless treat or a deadly trick. It goes to show that even when something is such a rare occurrence, it's the fear and the possibility that leaves a lasting impact. While we should be thankful that so many of these types of stories turn out to be hoaxes, and that most of the time, Halloween is a fun and innocent holiday celebrated and embraced by millions of children and adults everywhere. The story of this real-life Candyman, or as some call him, the man who killed Halloween, is one Halloween horror story that will forever haunt the scariest time of the year. Hopefully all of you out there are having a fun and safe Halloween, and I'd like to say thanks for taking a few minutes of your time and your season to reflect on this eerie moment in Halloween history. If you enjoyed this episode of Paranormal 101, please do me a favor and hit that like button, leave your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below, and I will see you all next time on Paranormal 101.